Dr. Ted here and welcome back to the channel and on this channel we deal with mental health issues and personal development and I want to talk about addiction to caffeine. I did a video some time back with regards to drinking coffee and I was amazed by some of the comments about how much coffee people do drink every day. So that makes for an interesting topic. Why are people so addicted to this? Stay tuned. Caffeine is a central nervous system stimulant. It blocks these adenosine receptors in the brain, which normally promote relaxation and tiredness. By doing so, caffeine increases the release of neurotransmitters like dopamine, which enhance alertness and concentration. This stimulating effect can lead to repeated use as people seek to maintain a high level of alertness and energy throughout their day. People often use caffeine as a psychological crutch to combat fatigue, improve mood, and increase mental clarity. Over time, this develops into a psychological dependency where individuals feel they just need caffeine to function normally. Coffee and other caffeinated beverages are deeply ingrained in many cultures. It's part of the social and professional routines, you could say. So social gatherings often revolve around coffee and the habit of drinking it becomes normalized, you could say. So making it very easy to develop this addiction. How many meetings have you gone to where there's always coffee on the table? For many, consuming coffee is more than just about caffeine intake. It becomes, you could say, a ritual. So just the act of brewing the coffee and drinking the coffee provides a sense of, you could say, routine and comfort reinforcing the habit, making it a very much, you could say, a significant part of your daily life. Get up in the morning, what do you do? Let's make some coffee. What about trying to stop coffee? Caffeine withdrawal can produce symptoms like headaches, fatigue, irritability, and depressed mood, which can start as soon as 12 to 24 hours after the last dose. To avoid these uncomfortable symptoms, people continue to consume caffeine. This kind of allows you to avoid, you could say, the withdrawal effects and continue the dependency on caffeine. Many individuals rely on caffeine to boost their physical and mental performance, particularly in high pressure environments like work or study. How many university students are using caffeine just to prepare for their exams, their projects? So this kind of temporary enhancement in alertness and energy over time, repeated use leads to, again, this dependency on it. Caffeine is easily accessible and widely available in various forms, including coffee, tea, sodas, and energy drinks. The ease and access and widespread cultural acceptance of caffeinated consumption makes it easy for people to develop a habit and eventually an addiction. To give an example of how this addiction starts early, I was told by a high school principal one time that he was asked, why do you have these caffeinated drinks in the school? And now he said, of course, there was money made from the, the vending machine, but he also said to the person distributing the drinks, he goes, you're selling these drinks for a very, very low price. How are you making any profit? And the reply from the representative was, we don't intend to make any profit here. We intend to create lifelong consumers. The immediate pleasurable effects of caffeine, such as improved mood and increased energy, provide this positive reinforcement that encourages continued use. Now this enforcement can lead to this habitual use, such as individuals seeking to replicate these feelings regularly. So this feels good by drinking this. I drink this, I have more energy, so why wouldn't I repeat this? By repeating this, I have all these benefits. Many people develop a habit of consuming caffeine at a specific time of the day. That could be the morning, during their breaks. Now this, again, this habitual behavior becomes very much ingrained, making it difficult to reduce or eliminate caffeine without feeling, you could say, disrupted. Well, this is what I do at this time of the morning. So again, these routines become very much ingrained in our thinking. Again, very hard to disrupt. So this habit, ongoing use of caffeine, is also reinforced that caffeine consumption is done at specific times of the day. So in the morning, again, before you go to work, 
during your work breaks. So again, that kind of, you could say the pattern of taking it at certain times becomes very much a part of your day, part of your thinking. Well, at this time, I have to have my coffee. And again, that is reinforced. You can see that in the movies, in various kind of social situations and people talking. Well, in the morning, I gotta have my coffee. So again, reinforcing that habit. Aggressive marketing and advertising by the coffee and beverage industries, as I mentioned in my example at the high school, play a very big role in normalizing and promoting caffeine consumption. Now these efforts can influence consumer behavior and again lead to that increased consumption and dependency. And again, we see this in various movies we watch where we see these different products, these caffeinated products, put into the movie, maybe the character is drinking it, just to show you how this product is popular and also the character is drinking it, so also you should be drinking it. Lastly, many people may not be fully aware the addictive potential of caffeine and just may not recognize the signs of dependency until they attempt to reduce their intake and as a result, experience withdrawal symptoms. I hope you have a better understanding of caffeine addiction. Now, if you know somebody who could benefit from this video, please share it with them. And wishing you the best mental health wherever you are in this big world. And until the next video, take care. If you want to limit or stop your caffeine addiction, check out this video.